Get in the car, losers. We're going reacting. <laughs> this isn't a car, it's an office. So, new season of Jujutsu Kaisen just dropped. I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty hyped for it. They got a new director on the series who's given it a sort of slightly different animation style. Some people are iffy on that. I really like it. I'm super excited to see how they handle this flashback arc and then especially the Shibuya arc. If you haven't read the manga, like absolutely peak. So I figured, you know, it might be fun to sit down, watch the first episode with you guys and, and share my reaction. Also, it's a convenient excuse to throw to the very fun ad that Trey and me put together for Gamer Sups and their new Jujutsu Kaisen flavor. I'm going to take a swig of this while you watch that. All right, first year, I got one very important question for you. What's your favorite waifu cup? Well, I... Wait, what? Waifu cups. Highly collectible, transparent shaker cups. Precision designed to measure and mix a perfect blend of... No, no, I love gamer cups. Keeps me focused and energized for hours with no hard crash. And each sugar-free flavor is more delicious than the last. I was just a little confused, because, like... You were trying to kill me a second ago? Stop stalling and answer the question. Kid knows his energy drinks, so I'll give him that. But he's dead the second he throws out some boring, safe answer like, It's not fair to pick just one. I love my, my whole, whole collection. But it's gotta be season three, cup nine, Temptation. They put that big, juicy thing in them shorts right front and center. No hiding it with a double side design. Now that's a cup for dudes who know what's up. Yo, have you tried that new Cursed Energy Raspberry Tea flavor? Yeah, just came in the mail yesterday with my limited edition Satoru Gojo cup. Shit's delicious. Wait, why are there cups of him and me and all my... Don't think about it. Anyway, you think that's delicious? Mix in some lemonade flavor. Suddenly it's raspberry lemonade. Huh, I'll have to try that. Wanna go beat off to X-Men First Class? Hell yeah, dude! It seems... We are best friends. Mm. Oh man, that's really good. Okay, let's get watching. Some very nice looking pavement. Okay, so we're starting on Ghetto. Before everything went down with him. Kind of a Chainsaw Man feeling shot there. I don't know, like alleyways and, and uh, <laughs> air conditioning units just kind of make me think of that now. That's a really nasty image. Not the animation, that looked gorgeous, I just mean. Oof. So this is before the movie, and this is setting up how he becomes an anti-human extremist. I, man, this VHS or, like, camcorder effect is really nice. They're doing a really good job of setting this in, like, the 90s. Or I guess early 2000s with those flip phones. Internet, okay. Mid-2000s. Okay, so we got a haunted house story to kick things off. I think this is a pretty solid way to, like, suck people back into the series and, you know, maybe introduce the concepts to people who are starting fresh. Having this be a flashback kind of makes it work on that level. Definitely, uh, seen better days <laughs> since that video. Bet it's a body. Oh no, trash. Man, that's some really good environment CGI. This almost feels like a, a start of a Resident Evil game. Doing a good job of setting up that spooky atmosphere. Ooh. Bet we're gonna get jump scared in one of those shots. Some really solid animation. Okay. So it's kind of like the Eternity Devil in uh, Chainsaw Man. Is this part anime original? I, f I don't remember it from the manga. This is clever. Clever problem solving, but also by splitting them up. They allow for maybe some more spooks. Although I think we're past that point. Holy crap! That was some peak animation right there. Mm. 
You cocky bastard, I love you. <laughs> Ooh, the LP! Oh, man. This action scene is so cool! That was... I love that shot with the with him reflected in the glasses. That's, that's such a cool transition. There's definitely some some like interesting foreshadowing in here, but like my main takeaway is they're 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 doing a lot of like TikTok transitions almost in this OP. Real slick. Banger of a song too. Okay, well they couldn't have jump scared us with that. <laughs> wonder if he'll use that infinite looping trick later with the captured spirit. <laughs> it's interesting to, you know, having Satoru be like the class screw-up slash class clown. Very fit, like it fits his character, but also it's a nice contrast to the, you know, the very, very effective hero that we know from the main story. Also very interesting contrast with Ghetto and what we know of him later. You know, he's espousing effectively the opposite of his philosophy. God, I love their dynamic. I really love how, like, Jujutsu... <laughs> oh yeah, Digimon references! Hell yeah! That that actually sums it up very effectively. Wow. But yeah, I, I, I love how, like, this series plays with the idea that Jujutsu's really dangerous, and, like, even the useful stuff that keeps people safe can go wrong very easily. That's a cool transition, too. It's a great bit of characterization. If you if you can't choose what you want from a vending machine, you hit both buttons at once. He will not. He will never stop being so full of himself. This this OST is fire. Okay, so these guys don't know what they're dealing with. Clearly. Is that a JoJo reference? <laughs> Immediately ignoring that advice about not being so full of himself. Gotta love it. Okay. That's a good cliffhanger. That's a really good cliffhanger. Just gonna enjoy these end credits, then I'll talk some more. Oh, this is such a vibe. Oh, I like them sitting on the border. That's really cool. Ah, uh, yeah, and we get that that like early two thousands nostalgia. The series is doing a really good job of like creating a different sense of time and place for each like time period that the story takes you to. It's a solid ED. Very stylish uh, next episode preview, too. Yeah, I, I think that was a very strong first episode to, you know, set up the new season. Sets up, like, obviously a lot of interesting mysteries for people who've watched the first season and, you know, know who Megumi is and stuff like that. They're like, oh, Fushiguro. Wonder, wonder how this guy's going to play into that. Clearly, he's going to be some kind of badass, but, I mean, you know. I read the manga, I know where that's going. It creates a solid sense of mystery around its character. At the same time though, you know, assuming that somebody's a new viewer to this, the fact that this is a flashback and like the earliest point in the timeline and you know, the, the way that they set up the idea of cursed spirits and everything, I, I think this does make kind of like an effective jumping on point for somebody who's just surfing channels and happens to see it. And you know, obviously that that's probably not gonna happen in North America or anywhere outside of Japan. And it's probably not that likely to happen in Japan. I don't know, I, I think it's really neat how they've set this up so that like, if somebody does just stumble across season two or the movie, they aren't necessarily being blocked from getting into it and then going back and checking out the other stuff. You know, that's that's some very smart series design. 
I'm not sure how effective it's gonna be, but I see what they're doing, and I, I, I just think it's neat. I think it's neat. If I have any complaints about the first episode, kind of spends a little too long on the exposition, maybe, but, you know, that is necessary to set up a conflict with the star plasma vessel and everything that they're going to be doing through this flashback. It doesn't really get into the main conflict of the series. It just sets it up. And the, you know, the first fight scene that they have, you know, there's some solid action. Definitely showcasing the action in that prologue scene in the infinite house and the uh op obviously but like this is this arc is gonna go some places you know this is just kind of bits and pieces of setup for it still pretty hype opening to the second season overall i can't wait for it to get where it's going in both the flashback and the next arc because again Mm. I'm having a fun journey getting there. I think they've done a good job of, like, you know, fleshing out this earlier point in time and, and fleshing out the supporting cast around Satoru and Suguru. I remember from the manga that after they pick her up, this flashback kind of goes at a breakneck pace, but I'm hoping that what they've hinted at with, like, the ED and the slow pacing of this first episode sort of holds true and they give us more time to spend with these characters and in this time period because, um, I, I don't know, I think it's fun. I, I'm enjoying the vibes. Very, very impressive use of 3D and, like, that VHS filter at the start. I think that the team behind this could probably make a pretty effective horror series if they wanted to. You know, they're obviously leaning more in the action direction with Jujutsu Kaisen, but like, while they did not ultimately go for a jump scare in that opening scene, I think they could have, and I think that might have been fun. Who knows? Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to get your Jujutsu Kaisen Gamer Sup's Cursed Energy flavor, and of course those very nice Jujutsu Kaisen Gamer Sup's cups. You'll find the link below if you want to check those out. As for me, I'm going to go get to work on the ones to watch, and then the video that we're doing after that, which I think you'll have a lot of fun with, especially if you like Jujutsu Kaisen or Shonen action stuff in general. Let me just uh, check my outro stuff here. Just leave the video running and pull a dark side fill. Why did I write that? Keep it real, guys.